Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin from grayflorals.com and today I have another process video for you. This is the final page in my traveler's notebook that I am sharing here on YouTube. I had a lot of fun with this page and that's why I left it for last because it has a lot going on that you guys will definitely want to see. I went through my stamp collection and probably pulled out 15 stamp sets in anticipation for this page. I've been loving stamp blocking for the last few months and every time I get something that I really can theme around a bunch of stamps I try to do it and this is one of those pages. It starts off with an innocent photo, a 3x4 of our breakfast from this beach trip we took, a waffle, some pancakes, and french toast are all featured and of course it's like a diner photo so you have those diner plates that are the size of your head, the diner cups, all classic pieces for this montage that I'm putting together. So to kick off my planning for this page, I pulled out a couple stamp sets. I have a journaling stamp set on the left-hand side from Heidi Swap, and on the right-hand side will be a conglomerate of all of the other possible stamp sets I could want to use. That includes more Heidi Swap, it includes Kelly Perky with Hero Arts, it includes Ellie Studio, it includes stuff from Michaels, I pulled out Bow Bunny, Whimsy Stamps, Anything you can think of, I did try to use. I also was inspired to use these stickers from Ellie Studio. I've had them for ages. They're still not empty, but I did get to finally use a couple more. Um, but they are a food theme st stamp set and sticker set that I had that go together. So I wanted to keep using them to try to finish off the sticker sheet. But for stamp planning, if you guys ever want to do something similar to this, I always lay out all my stamps first. So I wanted to start with these large donut pieces. I just thought donuts would be so fitting. I don't get to use my donut stamps very often, so I figured why not use them on the breakfast layout. Now did I have donuts here at this particular venue? No I didn't, but it's the theme we're going after for this particular stamp spread. And while it may seem like once you lay your stamps out this will be super easy, but I wanted to complicate things a little bit, so I selected multiple ink colors that I would want to use for this. So I'll have to stamp each one individually, but again, I think it'll be worth it in the end. So what I ended up doing was placing my large stamps, then alternating with some phrase stamps, some icons, and some small icon stamps really help fill in the space. I have a couple like small border stamps things to just take up the space so it felt a little bit better. Now, if you're a well stamper who has stamped for many years, you may know, things change once they're stamped and once you see the colors. So what I ended up doing was I knew I wanted a couple of these in black. So I wanted to start sort of from the bottom and work towards the top because I wanted to make sure that there was room for everything and that I was happy with how everything came out. So I wanted to alternate a couple of things here between the colors and some stamps I knew would do better in some colors than others, just knowing how they stamp from experience. And something I've learned when it comes to stamping is I cannot expect perfection. You actually will see me do several test stamps on an off sheet of paper first before going to my actual paper for this layout because of how nervous I was for a lot of these stamps. And you will know some of your stamps just stamp better than others. It's higher quality, you know, whatever it may actually be. It'll just work better. So while I do have uh, five colors picked out, I end up only going for the four of them, which is the pumpkin spice, the navy, the black licorice, and then the pine or noble fur. I can't remember which lawn fawn shade that is, but I really love all four of these colors together. Like I said, I wanted diner colors, but I don't have a great red yet, so I alternated with an orange instead. But we do have the dark blue in the picture, and of course, diner colors are dependent on the diner, but I just thought it'd be really fun to do some of these. So as we go through here, again, stamping them sporadically with the different colors just to make sure everything's going to plan. Now, so far I've had about one mess up on this page. You'll see it's in the bottom right. When I stamped that phrase, um, it didn't come out perfectly, so I end up having some solutions, some ideas if you need to cover up some of your stamp mistakes. And as I keep stamping, I ended up doing the donuts in orange, which I didn't anticipate both of them being in orange, but it just happened to work out. I mean, when you think of a donut, you don't really think of green or blue, but orange is doable, an orange flavored donut perhaps. We have our little camera here, that one's from Teresa Collins, and then I have another itty bitty donut with frosting on it that goes up here. Um, at this point, if you guys are doing this where you have to remove stamps while you stamp some of your larger stamps, 
Maybe you should take a picture so you remember exactly where you had everything. That's a great way to help yourself in this sort of process. But I just want you guys to know that this kind of technique is a ton of fun. It's fun to plan. It's fun to do. If stamping gives you some anxiety, what's really nice about this piece of paper, for example, is it's all separate from my actual layout. It's not like this is the background I must use. I could always cut a new piece of white paper and stamp again. So if you just take your time with it, and I will say I did take my time with this just to make sure I was happy, didn't want to feel rushed, and I had a lot of fun with it. And I hope you guys want to try out a stamp stack like this sometime soon. I know Heidi Swap has been posting a ton of inspiration with similar stamp stacks. She actually uses a lot more layering. I like stacking my stamps like this instead but I had a ton of fun with it and hopefully you guys can try it out sometime on your layout. And that's why I really wanted to try it in a traveler's notebook full page spread because I think it'd be a little too intimidating for me to just go into a 12 by 12 and do it that way. But I had a lot of fun doing it on this smaller scale. So as I go in with my last couple of ones, I love these ones from Hero Arts that are uh, morning themed, like the little alarm clock, the one that says good morning, sunshine, wake up, be awesome. I loved those ones for this particular spread. And what's nice is you can add in the small icons after, so you don't have to plan everything right out from the get-go, but planning your larger stamps will indeed help you in the long run. I thought some of my donuts were slightly bare, so I ended up going in with some blue sprinkles. Um, on this larger donut here because I just thought it would look better with a little bit more texture and uniqueness for this particular donut. But um, if anything, this layout just made me want more donuts. So I hope you guys are inspired to grab either some food pages to do, and I think you'll really like how it comes together in the end, or some stamps to put onto your next layout. But like I said, filling in those smaller spots with some small icons, like I'm using my star here. I've got some phrases that I can fit places, some little border stamps like this one. It's just a lot of fun and I can't recommend it enough. So what I ended up doing is adding some washi tape to cover up some issues. I had a lot of white space on the top line there. So I used some tape from the lovely Bella Boulevard at the top. And then I used some blue grid tape to cover up some of my stamping mistakes um, and spacing mistakes on the right hand side as well. I do end up stamping and cutting out that journaling block from Heidi Swap for the left hand side. I was too nervous to stamp directly into my journal, especially knowing that I could potentially mess up the journaling. I might as well just have it and then I can write on it and if it gets messed up, I can always cover it up again. I didn't want to do too much on the left hand side, but I didn't want it to be too plain either. I know a lot of the sort of busyness comes from the right hand side. So I want the colors on the left hand side without overwhelming it. So what I end up doing is putting down my title here at the top and actually pairing a couple strips of those same washi tapes I used on the right hand side to the left side of my photo. There's some white space up there with the cups so I figured I would just utilize that and glue my title into place again from Ellie Studio and their Let's Eat collection. And then I want to put in the journaling tab as the final bit on the left hand side and then on the right hand side there were a couple small stickers on that food set from Ellie Studio that I included like a star a couple star stickers on the right hand side and again just small little bits can really help make the page feel alive whether it's washi tape whether it's stamping or small stickers or phrase stickers like I'm adding here I desperately wanted this sticker sheet finish but that didn't end up happening on this particular spread but I had a lot of fun with this I loved the color scheme and I of course loved featuring some donut stamps alongside my breakfast food photo but I hope you guys enjoyed let me know if you guys are going to try this out on your next spread but thank you guys so so much for watching be sure to subscribe if you're not already and like this video if you did enjoy because it helps me out a lot thanks guys